Go ahead. So we're Team Segu. We're responsible for creating a trauma intervention app, an app that will assist the paramedics and other first responders in the pre-hospital patient care. So let's start off by looking at our backlog. For most of our backlog for the third iteration, we did a lot of code improvements and we managed to integrate a Realm database with our application. And we also added a couple more, a uh, little bit of features like creating patient details, viewing patient page, and uh, viewing like a list of all the patient um, data that's recorded. And other things we have in progress that will get done in the next iteration. Okay, yeah, the in progress. Basically, the bugs from React Native and the Xcode, so it's not from our progress. So basically, our progress, but those are just building issues we found. It's not working. It's kind of like slowing now our develop process. But the rest of the main required by a sponsor, we basically finished this uh, sponsor requirement. And now I will show you the code coverage. This is our current third iteration code coverage. Basically, we have 100% coverage for everything currently, include the database we just built in for this iteration. So basically 100% and we have about 26 and 190 test cases total. And then I will do the demo for this iteration. So we're gonna look at our app now. Uh, if it seems unintuitive, the UI, don't pay attention to that, we're gonna fix it later. So once you load up the app, So once you load the app, you'll get two options, an option to search for a patient that already exists, or an option to create a new patient. So let's start by creating a new patient. So right here, for the patient, you'll enter all the data that isn't monitored continuously. The things that will be monitored continuously are things like blood pressure, SpO2 level, or um, compensate, CPI, something like that. And then once you create a patient, you can go to the next page. Now, when you have all your electrodes and your monitors on the top of the patient and actually start monitoring them. At this point in time, the uh, application will start recording all the information that are all the information that's in these input functions. So there's no way like random things. Make sure uh, load oxygen is like under nine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So after you finish filling out all this information over here, um, the steps in the flowchart will start to begin the update. And this is pretty, pretty much the advice that the uh, paramedic or the first funder will be getting from the application. So once you finish all this, the next part, you'll start um, the flowchart and it'll tell you basically what you need to do. So whenever you click next, it'll give you a new piece of uh, information to um, work with based on the monitor levels of the patient. So right now it's telling you to give, ox if oxygen levels uh, over 90, that's your goal right now, you want to give oxygen, so you click next. And then once you've given them the oxygen, the paramedic will look at you know the patient's monitor and they'll update the data right there behind and then they'll click next again and then it says you finished your goal. And then you can go to the, um, the patient info. And to prove to y'all that all this stuff is being like recorded every second, you can look at the patient's information to see what piece of information has been changing. You go back to make all the back to the search. Yeah. So once you go to the search right here, you can see all the patients that you have that currently exist. And we're looking at patient Tom right now. <coughs> so this is the one we just created. Uh, we didn't fill out any information for the other, um, for BPS and BBD. But we did fill out the oxygen level, which is right there. We have it right there at 80. And then if you go to the next page, we're only showing like 60 um, pieces of, or 30 pieces of information per page. But you can see that we changed it past 92 at 91 seconds. And at that point in time, the information in the flowchart changed. Oh, and you can also go.
<laughs> right there. They wanted this feature so that maybe they want maybe you'll be able to like assist um, people in training or something of the sort. And if you go to the flowchart, you can see it'll change just the same way as it was before. Whatever the values were, they're constantly changing. But this is value has like 20,000 uh, 20, fields in it. So. And so it goes to the, yeah. And to prove that it's being recorded, we can look at the information in the patient. They're, they're all named similarly. We should have a uh, little button here to have the have the uh, feature to, for the user to modify the basic inf information and also continue to uh, monitor the patient. But as right now we don't have that button, so the user will need to pick the patient here, what whatever patient uh, they want to, and then when they choose the patient, they need to go back, and then that is still same patient, and you can change the name. That's the only way to edit a patient as of now. It's very unintuitive, but we're going to fix it in the next iteration. And it should change the data. When you go back, you should see the data change. When you choose the patient, right. and we keep continuing from the last from start point to keep continuing monitoring. Yes. But for this is for simulation, but for real, 
like this device you can incorporate. So when you go back, you should see the, uh, the patent at the monitor continuously. To show the real database is working, so we close the app and we restart it. Uh, and then go back to here, so you can see the data. So the data is persistent even when you close the app. So it is the database that stored locally. <coughs> okay, so this part is for our demo. And for the Jenkins part, we counter some issue with the RAM database. Uh, we asked the vendor to solve for us as well to, to see how it goes. And we found out, I think the real database is open with schema, with different schema, because we're changing schema at the time we upload. So before, it has the old schema on the Jenkins schema, and the new Jenkins schema is different. So we need to fix the build up update on the Jenkins as well. Yeah, so, so for so but for locally, it runs well. So basically, when, whenever uh, we commit a new uh, commit to uh, our the CI, so when the test run, it will create a, uh, a new database locally. And the pre commit will still have the, the local database. And two, two local database will be mismatched if they have different schema. Because we, we uh, there, there's a part in, uh, our, in this iteration that we need to update our schema. We didn't plan before. So the two schema are mismatched. So that's why uh, the view fail on Lenskin. But it, it's working refine locally because every time we review we uh, actually delete the uh, local uh, database but on Zenskin uh, Zenskin server to skip the local database of the old commit so that what uh, that that what that the problem we have currently have right now on Zenskin and consider the test uh, to actually this kind of test uh, cases so we, we do uh, encounter a lot of trouble, like uh, when you test with the, the real database, basically you need to wait for real database to read the data locally and other stuff. So we, we test, so it, it, it's, it's basically uh, a synonym task. So uh, real database run the code, but it like, it's uh, in another thread. In another thread, so um, when database finished, uh, running the code, uh, so it returned back uh, something like database already uh, finished run the code. So the problem with that is when we had a test case, we, we should expect some value and expect some value and compare that value to other value, and it in the same line in, in the same uh, file code. So it will run immediately before the database finished reading the data the local database. So the problem we have is that it will, it will make the test fail because the database haven't finished reading anything yet and you already expect something to return. And to, uh, to do that, we need to do some uh, asynchronous uh, task. Basically, we move, we move something else into another thread using uh, asynchronous uh, task in JavaScript. And we await to, for the database to finish first and then we will expect the uh, return value later. So that's what we solve the database uh, asynchronous task problem. So for the next iteration, we are planning to refactor the code and to fix some of uh, the mention I mentioned before the, the small issues with React Native and the library, third-party library problem. And now for now, we fulfill the uh, sponsored requirement. So basically, uh, basically, right now, we have every feature that the sponsor uh, wanted to have. So the net iteration, we will have a net iteration, uh, the whole net iteration for uh, refactor the code, um, have more detailed unit test, and uh, have better design for the UI. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you.